Greetings sailors, this video is going to demonstrate how I ensure I have necessary offline charts before any passage. I'm going to go through this process in Avionics because one, I use it, and two, it's the most popular smartphone chart plotting app. This process is applicable, however, to any other chart plotting app. For this demonstration, we're going to use a passage from Portland, Maine to Cape May Harbor, New Jersey. Just one quick tip for using this video, if you're watching this on YouTube, try maximizing because sometimes YouTube doesn't show the entire video and crops off important parts of the screen. In Navionics, you swipe and pinch to move about the globe, just like any other mapping app. Notice how Navionics downloads the charts after we zoom into Portland. When connected to the internet, Navionics will automatically download charts that you've subscribed to on demand as you pinch and drag around. You can observe the same thing at Cape May Harbor. Notice how Navionics lightens the areas where detailed charts are downloaded. This is worth learning to pay attention to, so you keep track of which charts you have downloaded. Once I know the route of a passage, the process is as follows. First, I make sure that I'm connected to the internet using Wi-Fi. Then, I verify I have the required subscriptions for the charts I need. Then, I download those charts. Then, I tell the app to update all of the charts that I previously downloaded. Lastly, I make sure I'm disconnected from the internet so that I can verify that I have all of the charts that I need in an offline capacity. Let's jump in. Now, you don't really need to be on Wi-Fi. In a pinch, I've definitely used cellular data to download charts I needed. I also regularly have chart updates that exceed a gigabyte, so whenever possible, I use Wi-Fi for Navionics chart downloads so I don't eat up my cell phone data allowance. Next, you must verify the chart subscriptions you need are current. You can see I have a few expired chart regions, but the one we need for this passage, US and Canada, is current. If you haven't previously purchased charts, you'll have to go out to the Add Region button and then select US or US and Canada chart package, and then click on the price to purchase that region. If you don't plan on sailing in the US, you should follow along in a region where you've already purchased a subscription. Next up is the most obvious step. You download the charts. Open the menu and select Download Maps. Navionics then prompts you to download charts one rectangular region at a time. As you zoom out, you'll find that Navionics limits the amount of charts you can download at one time. Place this rectangle over some or all of the charts you need and click Download to store the charts locally. I always err on downloading more than I think I'll need. Again note that Navionics lightens the map in areas where charts have been downloaded. These large downloads are why I recommend using Wi-Fi to download charts for Navionics. Once I've completed downloading new charts, I force Navionics to update all of the previously downloaded charts. This one's simple. Just click the menu and then update maps. If your currently subscribed charts are up to date, Navionics gives you this prompt. Otherwise, it will prompt you to download the charts and you just click update to do so. Now it's time to check our work. Disconnect the app from the internet. Here I just disable Wi-Fi and can see that my phone is in airplane mode and offline. Zooming into a dark, not yet downloaded area confirms that Navionics is no longer connected to the internet and shows you what it looks like when detailed charts are not available to Navionics. Scrolling north, you can see the border where my download ended. South of the rectangle, Navionics has no detailed data to render charts. If you go a little further north, however, we have detailed data, and you can watch as Navionics renders the charts. First I spot check our destination, Cape May Harbor. Then I check an area that wasn't downloaded in our initial route scouting, Nantucket Island. Everything looks good. Lastly, I verify charts for Portland, our point of departure. At this point, I'm satisfied that I've downloaded up-to-date charts for the passage from Portland to Cape May Harbor. Still. If this were a real passage I was planning, I would do the remainder of my planning disconnected from the internet so that I would discover and download any missing charts. Earlier, I showed you subscriptions that had expired months ago. I also showed the update maps feature indicated that all of my charts in this app are up to date. Both can't be true. If I navigate to waters covered by the expired subscription and select a rectangle of charts for Navionics to download, it will correctly indicate that I need to purchase a subscription to get the charts I need. In this case, it's a renewal. 
If I hadn't previously subscribed, Navionics would prompt me to purchase a subscription. Always, always make sure that the subscriptions you need are up to date. Navionics can have three different chart sources for a given area. The native Navionics chart is what we've been using up until now. Then there is the sonar chart made up of crowd source, depth sounder data in well trafficked areas. This is usually far more detailed than Navionics charts. In some regions there are also government charts. These government charts are often at least one of the sources for Navionics underlying chart data and have the advantage of being free. You'll notice that my phone has been disconnected from the internet while I've been showing you these other chart sources. Our initial download actually downloaded all three sources of chart data, even though we were set to Navionics chart mode while performing the download. Navionics charts are, of course, the preferred chart source to use. The government charts are displayed quickly enough in Navionics that I wouldn't use them for primary navigation. The sonar charts are much more detailed, but not from an authoritative source, and they're not usable at a scale necessary for passages. Still, the additional information is good to have at least as a reference. The buttons you press and the method for selecting which charts to download are different using other apps. Still, I follow the same process for verifying offline charts for each app I use for navigation. I'm thinking of keeping a series of Navionics videos going here on YouTube, and if I do, I'll be sure to link to them here. If you'd like more videos covering Navionics, let me know in the comments, especially if you have a specific topic you'd like covered, or just hit this video with a like. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you out there.